Hi everyone, so this week's topic on five waiting wombs is cervical mucus and how it affects your fertility. So first of all, uh, if you haven't already, you might want to start uh, checking your cervical mucus on a daily basis and uh, from you know the last day of your period up until um, the first day of your period. So and how you do that, the most easiest way that I have found is you know first of all make sure that you wash your hands before and after to prevent any type of germs um, yeah so I shouldn't have to explain that but um, basically uh, insert you know one or two fingers into the vagina and get some of the cervical mucus on your fingers and then take it in between your pointer finger and your thumb finger and stretch it and uh, you can see also by the color uh, during the you know the first the first stage of your cycle um, you know during menstruation as well as after uh, shortly after menstruation your cervical mucus will be um, there really won't be much it'll be dry usually and then uh, part way in between menstruation and ovulation it'll become wet um, and more of a milky consistency and it'll be um, not really sticky and it'll be white or creamy in color and then um, the best you know mu the ideal mucus for ovulation is uh, one that resembles egg whites and it's clear and sticky and stretchy and um, you now I do have some tips as well for increasing cervical mucus quality um, because as some of you know, uh, when you have PCOS or any other uh, hormone irregularity, it can cause um, you know bad cervical mucus quality. And also, uh, if you're taking um, any type of antihistamine um, or if um, you have a vaginal infection of any kind, um, that can cause a decrease. And uh, also, a lot of the fertility meds, such as Clomid, will also decrease cervical mucus. So, uh, anywho, I do have some tips here to help with cervical mucus production. And first of all, that's get you know drink plenty of water, and you know Gatorade, you know things like that. Stay away from the caffeine, and I'll explain why. But drink uh, plenty of water, you know, at least up to two liters a day, if not more. This will prevent dehydration as well as help with uh, cervical mucus production and um, take uh, evening primrose oil however I will caution you on that um, evening primrose oil should not be taken after ovulation so it is important to note um, that this should only be taken from the beginning of menstruation until ovulation and not after ovulation and the reason why is because um, evening primrose oil can actually cause uterine contractions, which can prevent a fertilized egg from implanting. And also, another oil that you could uh, try to help with cervical mucus production is uh, flaxseed oil. And uh, that also helps to increase cervical mucus quality, and that should only be taken after ovulation to the start of your next period. Now, also... Um, one other tip is uh, cough syrup, such as Robitussin. Um, there's a few other ones out there, you know, off-brand that uh, will also do the trick. Uh, cough syrup loosens the mucus in the body, including cervical mucus. This should only be taken in the first half of the menstrual cycle prior to ovulation. It's important uh, to ensure that whatever cough syrup that you do get specifies guaifenesin or expectorant, um, not an antihistamine, and I'll explain why. Um, antihistamines actually will decrease cervical mucus, you know, it decreases all mucus in the body, so including um, what's going on down south. So um, now some, some things that uh, also decrease cervical mucus, uh, for one, smoking. Um, it can uh, impede quality and quantity of cervical mucus, which, you know, obviously makes getting pregnant difficult and, uh, you know, it's not good for a baby either. So uh, quit smoking if you can. Um, 
and uh, absolutely reduce caffeine consumption. Caffeine is a diuretic, uh, which means it actually takes uh, takes water out of the body, and so uh, you know obviously water is vital for cervical mucus production. And uh, like I said, avoid antihistamines. Antihistamines will dry up, you know, not only the mucus in your nose and uh, in, you know, in your chest and everything, it'll actually dry up the cervical mucus as well. And uh, reduce your dairy intake. Uh, dairy products such as milk will thicken the mucus in the body, including cervical mucus. Uh, cervical mucus, um, you know, which is thick, is not ideal for conception. You you know want it more thin and slippery, but yet still sticky and egg white. Um, and if none of these remedies work, you know it's definitely important to uh, discuss this with your doctor, and you know maybe he or she can um, prescribe something for you that would be over the counter. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's about all I got to say about cervical mucus so anyways i do want to thank you for uh watching this video and please subscribe to the five waiting wombs and if you have any questions or comments please post them below this video and alrighty, bye bye